having a cell phone or having a phone in your home phone in your home it's almost a rhyme yeah is something many younger people decided to forego in light of carrying a cell phone mm-hmm. uh, however many people would like to have a landline uh miss metaverse jim Walsh free. And I, for free yes wow We'll be discussing the options on how to have a free landline in your home uh, a little bit later in the hour. Self-driving cars have been uh, tackling or taking advantage, I should say, of testing the harsh winter conditions we have been experiencing. They've actually been testing in some of these winter conditions. Well, this would be the place to test it. It would be. Uh, these topics and much more today on the Tech Ranch at the Control Panel. Producer mm. extraordinaire, who I caught just swallowing a sip yeah. of coffee. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm good. Jim, I'm good. Jim Moss, how you doing? I'm doing. I'm happy. Today, uh, spring happy. training. Pitchers and catchers reporting uh, for the Twins and a yes. lot of other teams. Yeah, are you a baseball fan? Uh, baseball would be my baseball and hockey would be my two games. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're not big into football or basketball or anything. Well, I know kinda... you know I I if somebody hands me a pair of tickets to a game, I'll go. Sure, but I'm not a uh, I'm not a I'm not a fanatic. I'm not a sports fanatic at all. Right. But if I'm going to if if I had my preferences, it would be for baseball or hockey. There, to me, there is something about the lazy sun yes. going to a ball game, and and uh, I don't know, there to a baseball game, I should say. There, yeah. To me, there's just something about. Well, we're getting that now. We got finally got our own minor league team in this town. We do. Yeah. What do we have? Oh, uh, well, we'll talk about it in a few minutes here. Okay. I'll, I'll pull up the website. Yeah, that'd be cool. But I yeah, know that there's getting, been some talk about. We're getting this. a semi-pro minor league team in Bismarck. It's been in the works for a couple of years now. Interesting. And we'll talk about them in a couple of minutes. i got to get the uh, paperwork. Okay. Here. Oh, yeah. I'd love to know more about yeah. that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, autonomous vehicles uh, have been testing in our weather. And uh, so, Michigan has a place called, I'm looking through my notes here. It's actually a smart city. And they've actually been testing because uh, it's called M-City. It's a 32-acre fake urban environment at the University of Michigan. And if you were ever to go to this place, it actually looks like a small town. I mean, there are there are shops uh, that line the sidewalks. There are homes. There are streets. So in this 32 acres, you have all of this. And because we've had weather this year, Ford has actually been driving in this crazy stuff. And in fact, Jim, I know you're looking up other stuff right now, yeah. but I'm going to share this photo with you here uh, when you get two seconds. But they are um, – so – this is what the photo looks like. We should be okay. streaming live today, but yeah. obviously this autonomous vehicle is driving in snow. It looks like a regular car. Yeah, yep. it looks like it's driving in you know, yeah. a snowy Now, day. if you look across the top, you'll see some LiDAR, uh, those little silver uh, s- cylinders there. You see yeah, those? on top. Look, yes. They look like they're on top of the car. They right. look like uh, little cell phones or even transistor radios. Yeah, they're, they're pretty small. They used yeah. to have these big tops. I mean, these big. they're called LiDAR. And, right. Uh, um, so those are sensors that are working. But it's interesting that – so Google uh, last week pulled its cars off the road because yeah. of bad weather. Uh, they had some a lot, of, a lot of rain, of course, in California in the last week, as many of us know, because of the dam uh, down in California. Yeah. That's been uh, an issue the last couple of days down there. And so they pull their cars off the road, and here Ford comes right out after they state that and say, hey, you guys can pull your cars off the road. We're, we're actually running them here in the snowstorm. And they actually have technology. So what they've done, because I get this question all the time. In fact, I think you've asked me this question a couple times. I probably about have. How do these things, how are they going to work in the bad weather? Yeah. You know, and I've always had this this thing in my head about mm. it's it's more about super mapping of these of our roadways than it is anything else. So that. Talking of the GPS, you mean. Talking about GPS. Okay. And then, you know, they actually carry along other things in their memory so when you're driving along the road the car can sense where it's at because of other landmarks maybe buildings maybe trees things that would normally be there anyway i would hope they would sense a tree so they wouldn't hit it yeah but (laughs) hey look out there's a tree are you sure yeah (laughs) yeah it's a tree there but it it knows that this tree is off to the right you know so then Mm -hmm. it knows uh, approximately, or it knows exactly, I should say, where the road is at, even though the road might be covered in six inches of snow because yeah. it knows these other landmarks in the area. Ah, So yes. instead of just regular mapping, like GPS mapping about where you'd be at, I call it super mapping, where they actually grab all these different landmarks, super mapping. These, all, all these buildings, all this other stuff that's along the way, yeah. and have that recorded in its data bank. So if you can't see the road, 
it still knows where the road is at because it knows all this other stuff that's around yeah. it. Yeah. So if that makes sense. It so, does. So it knows where the road is at. And then, of course, the other thing, of course, is is how does it drive on icy roads and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. So they have been testing this as well. But uh, there's another photo here. I keep sharing photos with Jim even though we're on yeah. the radio. So you'll see the white car that we were just looking at with the stuff on There's a on white it. car and a blue car, yes. And the blue car, they don't have an autonomous uh, driving, although it's, it's equipped with it, but they were actually manually driving that particular okay. car. And they were testing the two to see how the different cars reacted, human-controlled or computer-controlled. And yeah. as, as difficult as this is to say, the computer outperformed the human really? driving. Yes. Okay, it looks like they're on a two-lane highway in the middle of the winter. And uh, I don't know if this indicates anything, but it looks as though the blue car has skid marks yeah. uh, underneath where it was kind of having right, a little right. trouble negotiating well, the road. As I was reading this. That would be the guy, that w- the one with the guy in the car. That's correct. Okay. So what happens is is that, uh, and, and you've gone, we've all done this before. We go into a little bit of a skid. We start to slide a little bit. Sure. It just takes us a little more time to react to it than the computer does. Yeah. The computer feels that it's moving, you know, starting to skid a little bit. It can correct very quickly and not overcorrect like you and I do. I mean, a lot of times we overcorrect to, to respond to it, then we skid the other way again. And, well, when you're learning and to the, drive the first couple of times, you're going to do that. Yes. Uh, it does take, uh, especially if you're, I think it's more an issue with young drivers because as you get older, you learn how, especially if you drive in it on a regular basis, which you would do if you lived in a place like this. Right. Uh, you learn to negotiate it. But right. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely an issue. Yeah. And, of course, the computer, because it reacts so much quicker, pulls you out of that skid a lot quicker than it would if you were driving. Because, you know, there's ju- there just a reaction time. That's all yeah. there is to it. I mean, yeah. you know, it still might be milliseconds, but the computer reacts dramatically faster than you and I would ever do. Aren't they already and- doing this with trucks? You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a truck uh, on one of our uh, one of the spurs of the interstate here that actually slid off the road, wound it up on its side. Right. And uh, I was thinking, don't they have computers now? Uh, in a lot of the trucks that kind of partially take over in emergency situations. So they have a couple things that are going on. The yeah. late model trucks have lane keeping, so they know where the lanes are at. And, right. of course, they also have some of them have uh, uh, that emergency stopping. So if you get yeah. too close to a vehicle, it'll slow down, uh, those type of things. Our cars have, some of our newer cars have these as well right now. Yeah. So you're starting to see more and more, starting to see more and more of this technology that's coming out. So, sure. so yeah, it's it's interesting you know, and I know people have always been concerned about how autonomous vehicles are going to handle snow and ice and, and bad visibility mm-hmm. and all this other yeah. stuff. Well, because of the sensors in them, they actually see and feel the stuff better than you or I could ever. So just think of it as an enhanced tool to what you do now. I mean, it would be difficult for you to take a screw out of a out of a piece of plywood with your finger. So you go get a two, uh, you know, you go get a screwdriver to do that, right? Well, I just, wonder if, yeah. I wonder if there would ever be a point where the computer would kick in and say, uh, the weather is too bad, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. actually, the car actually at, at this point will 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 pull over and park right now. So absolutely. I believe it. So anyway, after the break, everybody, we'll continue our discussion on yes. driving autonomous vehicles, driving in the winter, along with a uh, dozen of iOS apps are vulnerable to Wi-Fi snooping. You'll want to hear about this. Come on back. Right now, it's thirty-four. News and views with Joel Heitkamp. Weekdays on Super Talk 1270. Follow the Guru of Geek at Facebook.com backslash the Tech Ranch or Twitter at Guru of Geek or the Tech Ranch.com. Here again is your Guru of Geek, Marlo Anderson. And we want to thank all of our followers who listen to us on the Blueberry Network. Mm. We're also on the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Blueberry. We're on LinkedIn or LinkedIn. Tuned in, I should Tuned say. In, Tuned yes. in. Yeah, we're on LinkedIn too, I guess. But I, not, I guess. I think not, you are, aren't you? Yeah, well, yeah. you are too, but we don't broadcast broadcast the show there right course, right um we're also on the roku itunes and of course our own app radio pop all kinds of places you can catch the show later on in case you hear something today that you yeah. maybe want to make a note of or something by so. the way uh it's the uh bismarck larks yes named after the, i guess a state bird right the metal lark. metal larks yep and uh, it's also a globe trotter. <laughs> that is true isn't it yeah metal lark yeah metal lark lemon no yeah. but it's the bismarck larks and it's a uh they're they're part of Northwoods, which is a okay. collegiate league. So we'll have to investigate this some more. But of course, yeah, you, before you, uh, they start they start the season in May, so yep. we'll have somebody on the, on the air here. Yep. Uh, before that, definitely. And of course, you know, I, I know that uh, many of you are listening not in the Bismarck Man right. and local area, uh, but Jim and I are a buzz about this because we it's it's going to be fun to have. Uh, 
a better baseball venue to I'm go to I'm a Philly here. kid. I grew up in Philadelphia, so I miss semi-pro baseball. Yeah. That's yep. a joke. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that they really weren't quite? Yeah, I won't say that. Yeah. Uh, we've had our off years yeah. in, well, in Philly. That's how it is. Oh know. yeah, but you know, it's it, it'll be fun to have uh, a place that you can go to on a on a nice summer evening yeah. and enjoy a ball game. I mean, yeah, we, the whole ritual of you go there, you get a hot dog, corn dog, just sit there under, you know, in the sun. Yeah, it starts to get dark, and they turn the lights on. You're under the stars. It's just cool. I just yeah, yeah it's going to be nice. You know that we don't have to drive 500 miles to go see or fly someplace yeah. now to go see a baseball game. So it'll be fantastic. Yeah, excited for this. So. Yeah, we're talking a little bit about uh, autonomous vehicles driving in the winter. The other thing I wanted to get to before we have Miss Metaverse come on, uh, talking about how you can get a free landline, by the way. Right. This is, uh, this is going to be cool stuff a little later in the show. Uh, but we talk a lot about when you go to the coffee shop and or any other place and you hop onto their Wi-Fi yeah. that you probably don't want to use... You know, you don't want to do any banking or anything right. like that. Things that you would have to put your password in because it's very easy. It's called Wi-Fi snooping. Yeah, well, we have a easy. number of coffee. We have Barnes and Noble here. Oh yeah, and we have a number of local coffee shops that also provide it. But this is this is something that's across the country. So I'll, yeah. I'll give you an example. So two years ago, uh, I was right after CES. As a matter of fact, okay. I was at another conference and I was about ready to hop on uh, to do some work and I, uh, something that I was covering. It's called the uh, Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's like an ad advertising. The ads, um, it's called the Ad Summit, I think it is, and and it's about advertising online. You know, you see all the the little ads that pop up on computers when you right. go to a website, and that's how they pay for them. Just like television ads pay for TV programs, mm -hmm. ads pay for a lot of the websites that you go to. So anyway, I was at that, and the person I was talking to, I was like, "You're not going on the Wi-Fi here, are you?" And I'm like, "No, I'm hopping onto my phone." And he goes, "Well, I have something to show you." So he pulls up on his computer a little program that he downloaded. And as I'm watching this thing, there were thousands, because there was probably 20,000 people at this conference. Mm. And there are all kinds of people that are logged into the free Wi-Fi. Right. And we're watching people log into their accounts and through their bank accounts because you're in Las Vegas. So I think the first thing people are thinking is like, how much money do I got left in my account so I can go yeah. do something, right? So they're logging in. And we can watch them because this particular program had a, a key logger on it too so you could watch them input their username and passwords and we were just watching this as a, a part of a wi-fi snooping experiment to see how mm -hmm. easy this was it is so crazy easy that it alarmed me greatly whoa uh because you know ever since then i've never used the coffee shop or anything for anything that i consider to be a potential identity theft issue for mm -hmm. me. So if I'm doing, if I'm going to do that type of work, yeah. I actually turn the Wi-Fi hotspot on my phone, and then go on and do my banking or whatever through there because I'm uh, that is dramatically more secure than if you were on the local Wi-Fi in, in a coffee shop or what have you. Yeah. So so anyway, with that said, I'm just kind of setting up this this piece now. So um, it's not just your computer that you have to be concerned about here. I mean, your phone is your computer, too. I mean, it really it is. is. It is a computer. And I think a lot of people like to take advantage of that Wi-Fi hotspot when you're in an area so that you can maybe play a game or, or maybe download some stuff or whatever. But yeah. the issue is is that even the apps that you work with are vulnerable to Wi-Fi snooping. So, And what's crazy about this is that you don't even have to add or have to put a username or password into it mm -hmm. these particular apps and there are dozens of them yeah uh that basically have vulnerabilities built into them already and some of them are uh snap upload for snapchat yeah so if you're using snapchat you got to be careful um you know i'm still not on snapchat i'm not either or I, instagram i'm actually and i'm i'm an old I'm partial. Well, we to need Instagram. the geezer in here. Though. Yeah, that's right. He's not on anything. <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> He'll be thinking that's something else. He's on Metamucil. That's about exactly it. right. Hey, that'd be a great social media channel. Yeah. Metal Musil. Met I love Metamucil. Metamucil Met channel. Yeah. You'll go through it very quickly, like so, grease through a goose. <laughs> I had to clean that up for you know, fam that. family uh, program. That's here. right. But uh, um, so anyway, I think you know when you're. You have to be very, very careful if you're going to be logging on with your smartphone in a coffee shop uh, 
to their stuff because this, the apps themselves that you have are vulnerable. And the thing is, is that yeah. they can go into them. And even if they get their us the username and password that you're using to log into it, this is the thing. And I'm sure you're, you're just as guilty. I won't say guilty of it, Jim, but you do this because it's practical, I should say. That you probably use the same username and password across multiple accounts, correct? A lot of them, not all of them. Right. Well, you, you Most, don't have the well uh, in, intentionally. I probably would, which you you shouldn't. Well, it's the, just a matter of catching up on everything. I still got accounts that use the old passwords. Right. Uh, you know, some of all my business work accounts they require you to change your password right. every six months or so. Yeah. And uh, usually when I do that, I change it to the same thing, and then I go back and I change everything else. And to be honest, I just haven't gotten around to that. But the, the challenge here is is that because we are we do so much of this stuff that right. people want that simplicity in their lives, so they basically tend to stay use the same username and password sure. or variations of them across. Who wants to sit there and go, well, gee, what, what was the password for this Oh, my thing? goodness. That's yeah. right, because you, you, would, you would need to remember 40, 50, 100 of these things, yeah. right? So, so if you have access to one account, you know, if somebody were to, to break into one of your accounts, odds yeah. are pretty good that they're if they know anything about you at all, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're in your, your email, you might be able to get into your banking information, yeah. all this other stuff. So it really concerns me a lot. Uh, so you have to be very concerned about, you know, when you're in a coffee shop, and I don't mean to pick on coffee shops, anywhere that there's a free Wi-Fi. You know, so that could be the, the local superstore now has free Wi-Fi. Well, here's the thing I'm thinking. So. Uh, somebody's probably working on an app for that kind of thing. Uh, that keeps track of all your passwords. But again, if somebody breaks into the app, you know, you're no so better off. There are actually a couple of them already. One's yeah. called LastPass, and I use LastPass, but you're right. They've been hacked before. Sure. And so I'm always concerned about that too. It's it's convenient, uh, and supposedly la when you use LastPass, I shouldn't say supposedly, it sets it up so that you and I don't even know what the password is that they put into these things. So, ah. so it, the software controls all of that. Gotcha. However, I mean, that's concerning to me too because if I ever need to have access to something on a device that I don't have LastPass mm -hmm. on, for example, then I have no clue how to get into it. So <laughs> yeah. it goes to the other extreme real, real fast. What, hap so. what happens to me is when I come back from a vacation, I'm good at keeping up with all the passwords as long as I'm doing it on a regular basis. Sure. I go away for two weeks vacation like I did a year ago when I went out to see my dad when yep. he was sick. Yep. I went out, uh, saw my dad, came back. I, I had to uh, dig through all my papers to find my old passwords again. You almost you have to think about it, don't you? And then yeah. I notice too, uh, like when I do the same type of thing, um, I'll actually start uh, pulling up the old passwords. Right. You know, I'm like, what is the pa I, I had this issue last night, as a matter of fact, something yeah. I hadn't been into for a while. And I just finally gave up and hit the forgot password. <laughs> forgot password. And of course, it comes back and tells me exactly what I, you know, and I'm like, yeah. oh my goodness, that's, that's, I can't And you're always trying to come up with so. things that you know you'll remember. Gee, what can I remember? You know, you, you run through all your pets' names and, uh, you know, years yep. and whatnot. And, and a good, a good process. And I mean, I, I'm probably, I won't say I'm better than most, but, but uh, because I've been doing yeah. this for a while now, I always try to find a couple different things. Like I'll, I'll yeah. figure out your last name yeah. and my, my pet from 40 years ago or something, yeah. right? And I'll combine the two to make a word, throw a couple of uh, numbers in there. Or pick your favorite hobby, your favorite movie, right. whatever. Right. You know, if you well, if you use um, just a standard word, uh, they can crack that in like, uh, just under a minute. So what a about a proper name, like uh, any of that stuff? So if if, eh, okay. if if it's a word in the English language, a, a, a name or whatever, it takes approximately sixty seconds to do that. If you just add a number to the end of that, and then I'm talking about an eight eight letter name or or word, for example, if you just add one number to the end of that, you've taken that to where it takes them about a half hour to crack it. Now, if you add a punctuation point or something in there, now you're at a day. I mean, it's yeah. just amazing how just one more thing here or there makes it. And it's not that they couldn't crack it. It's about the convenience of doing it. They'll just give up on it after a Or come a while. up with some little phrase and use the first letter of, uh, you know, first letter of each word. Yeah. Absolutely. There's all kinds of ways you know. that you can that you can really secure your password and still I have like some baseball type of baseball in the summer. I L B B exactly. and so on. That's exactly right. I and love put a that number idea, two actually. in there if they had the word two, put a two there like Prince would. That's yeah. exactly right. All right, everybody, we're at that time. So yeah, that, baby. After the break here, Miss Metaverse will be joining us. And we're gonna be talking about how you can add a free landline uh, to your house. Hey and Katie, you there? Hi, Jeez. hang on, we're gonna put you on hold, okay? Thank you. That was very rude of us. I think so. Put her on hold right on the air like I that. Yeah. Come on back, everybody. 
Right now it's 34. The home for ABC News at the top of the hour is Super Talk 1270. We're back to the Tech Ranch. Stream this program now at supertalk1270.com. Here is your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And now to talk to us about how to get a free landline Ooh. from the island of Long, Miss mm. Metaverse Katie. Katie, how you doing? I'm doing well, Marlo. How are you doing? Doing fine, too. Did you get through the, the snowstorm okay last week? Seriously, I was just about to say, I feel like my house is going to blow it away right now because oh. it is so windy, and the weather here has been so weird. I mean, it's it's one day we had uh, two feet of snow, and the day before that day, we had 60-degree weather. It's it's crazy. It sounds like our weather was uh, a month to two months ago. We go from basically mowing yards one day to two feet of snow on the ground the next. So <laughs> we can appreciate right. that. Although I will say that the last – have we had really much snow, Jim, in the last month? Not in the last month. We've the, had a the, couple inches. That's I mean, been about it. The big storm was New Year, Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And then after that uh, – I mean, we had a couple of in the early part of January that were – a lot of snow, but really nothing. Yeah, it's been it's been relatively quiet the last month, and it's getting nicer every day. The whole month mm-hmm. here is supposed to be in the 30s and 40s now, so that's just fantastic. But anyway, we are talking about how you can put a free landline uh, in your home. So I know I texted you this morning to investigate this a little bit. I do have some backup information for you, and I use this stuff a lot, so... Um, where maybe you don't know something about something, Katie, I might be able mm-hmm. to fill in a little bit. So, <laughs> Sounds good. All right, so take it away there, Miss Metaverse. Okay, so I think one of the biggest points to make right off the bat is that a lot of the times when we hear free apps that make free phone calls, it sounds good, you know, and then you go onto the App Store or, or Google Play, And there's tons of apps that say that they are free apps for free phone calls. Mm. But the thing is, a lot of that, um, these apps claim to be free phone call apps, but they actually are just free apps themselves. And then when you get into the app and you actually download it, then, of course, you have to pay for the actual calls. Right. So So, it's kind of clever how they they pull some of this off to make you download the app. So it's good to have this discussion today so we can point you in the right direction okay right great (laughs) all right so one of the most common ones that i use is actually whatsapp it's (laughs) w-h-a-t-s-a-p-p so it's whatsapp um and it's an app that's actually owned by facebook and a lot of the people that i know use this for texting um and also phone calls too and the way it works is you can make uh app to app phone calls um, so through the app, or, um, you know, you could also do secret messages too, which is also, you know, beneficial, um, you know, if you're texting things that, um, you want them to be encrypted, you can encrypt them through the app. So that's helpful too. Okay. Have you used it? I, you know, I used to use WhatsApp. I haven't used it in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. I've, I've basically <laughs> stayed with, um, the default apps on my phone for communication. So, um, I think when I was using it a couple years ago, maybe it was early on and I was having some issues with the speed of the app. You know, it just seemed mm-hmm. to be a little bit of a delay when I was talking to people or whatever. So I just went back to the, the standard default. Now, of course, with our, with our devices being much faster, that probably isn't as true anymore. So mm-hmm. I should probably try it again just to see how it works. I, I use it all the time, um, especially because at my little nonprofit that I'm launching, uh, Body Eye, my partner, Body Eye, Zach, he's based in the UK. So a lot of the times when we need to talk, we need an app that we can use that's, you know, easy. And we found uh, WhatsApp to be the best for what we do because, you know, we could do, um, we could talk with other people if we have to. We can make free phone calls internationally. Um, and it's easy, and it syncs with your your phone contacts too, so it's, it's easy to use. I like it. So let me ask you this then. So I I know we're not talking about landlines yet. We'll be getting to that in a little bit. But so you're basically using your smart device now, your your smartphone, uh, to make free calls to the UK through WhatsApp, correct? Right. Okay. So do, I'm assuming you have to be in a Wi-Fi 
area for that to happen, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. I, it's it's through the app. So okay. So if you, as long as as long as your as, yes. as long as your phone is synced to a Wi-Fi, then you're able to make free calls to um, people who have the app. And you said you can actually call other phones as well with this. E, I believe so. I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Like I, we could call each other through the app. Okay. Like a phone call. So. For instance, if my phone's sitting down, it's, it shows up like a regular call, and then I'll pick it up. Gotcha. Um, but it is through the app. Okay. Um, yes. Well, that, that, so. actually, though, that is, you know, I know even though it is app to app, you know, so the person on the other side has to have it. If you're doing business with somebody, and I guess you could use Skype, you could use Google Voice or, or Google Hangouts, uh, all these would probably do the same thing. If you need to communicate with somebody outside of your country, you know, so United States to UK, for example, which would normally cost quite a bit to make a phone call to, uh, you can do these things for free if you're doing, you know, business with these people on a regular basis. Right. It's an easy way to stay in contact with everybody because a lot of people in business are using this. So you'll find a lot of people on the app already just by signing up for an account. When you download the app, you put it on your phone, and then you'll open it up, and just like with Snapchat or another social media um, app, you'll just see people from your contacts who you're already connected with, and then you could just uh, connect with them and, and then talk. So it's it's pretty neat. So the other thing, um, too, that, that I, I really like about this type of thing is that, um, you know, if you wanted to, and I'm going to pick on, so what do you know about Google Voice? So, right, I was going to I was gonna get there next. Okay, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Google uh, Google Voice is good. I mean, it, I would say the Google Voice is the best free overall service because it kind of does a little bit of everything. Um, with with Google Voice, you can let's see, you could do free SMS, you could make free conference calls, and have free voicemail services. I know I, I haven't used it personally, but I have friends that all use it, and I know with them it's it's very easy because you can check your voicemails and also have a, a text. You can receive a text of a voicemail. Right. So if someone leaves you a voicemail, come up as a text on the phone. So right. stuff like that, it's, it's actually helpful um, for a lot of people. So I actually would try, I would try using that. I was thinking about that, actually. So I'll, um, since I have uh, a little more experience with Google Voice than you do, you, you're, you're spades ahead of me when it comes to WhatsApp, and I'm going to be, I'm going to try that shortly. <laughs> Uh, but uh, with Google Voice, I do have a little bit of experience with that. So the thing I like about Google Voice is that you can actually make phone calls too. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you're on your computer, and, and, and again, everybody, we're going to get to landlines here shortly, but if you're on your computer and you've got Google installed uh, on your computer and you're in Chrome, for example, you can just tab the phone number. And if you have a headset, uh, it'll call that phone number for you. Now, I know that's not new stuff, but if you run it through Google Voice... Um, it gives you a lot of options. I mean, you can transfer that call. Let's say you needed to leave the office. You can transfer that call to your cell phone, for example, and continue the conversation. So um, there's, there's some cool stuff with that. The, um, I'm really big into repurposing old technology, as you probably know. And uh, so one of the things I, you know, if you're going to set up a landline and maybe you don't want to go through all the experiences, you know, I won't say all the expense. We're getting into some of that in a little bit here. Uh, but if you want, if you have Wi-Fi in your house, you could actually take an old smartphone, one that you maybe don't use anymore, and just have it plugged in in, your, in the house, and you can port your phone number, maybe a landline that you have now, over to Google Voice, and mm -hmm. you can actually for free then have a smartphone that maybe you just keep plugged in in the house all the time, and this becomes kind of your de facto landline. It's just like you'd have a cordless phone to run through the house with. Your new cordless phone is now your old smartphone that you just put the Google Voice app on, and then it'll make and receive phone calls. And these phone calls are free, which I absolutely love. So it's, yep. it's a way to repurpose maybe an old, you know, if you got an iPhone laying around or an old Android I'm guessing Google. You're an iPhone person, aren't you, Katie? Yes. So you have? Do you have the Google app on your iPhone? Yes, I, I do use a lot of Google apps on my phone, actually. Okay, so I'm I'm I guess I would be curious if Google Voice or, or Google Hangouts would work. I'm guessing that it does. Uh, I just I think don't it have. Does. Okay, I'm pretty sure. 
I don't have real world experience with that, so I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's fantastic, and the quality is is fabulous as well. Um, and again, we're going to get into landlines in a little bit, and that landline yeah. integration is about Google Voice as well. So um, yes, any other any other apps that you can think of that you would use with your smart device? Those are the ones that I. I use personally, and, and I know that there's another one called WeChat, which is essentially the same thing as, as uh, WhatsApp. Okay. It's very similar. So, so if you want to check that one out, too, it's called WeChat, W-E-C-H-A-T. What about Skype? Do you use Skype at all? Yes, I actually do use Skype, um, but Skype isn't free. It's not free phone calls. So right. for me, you have, to, you have to actually pay, but it's very, very it's very very cheap you know you could you could have like a ten dollar credit on your skype account and and do multiple multiple lengthy phone calls i see and i used to do that for calling into the show actually so really um, it's definitely helpful Mm -hmm. interesting so so even though i mean you you can call a landline with skype if a person has skype on the other device of course it is free when it's app to app correct right Jim, obviously you use Skype? I, I use it, yeah. Okay. okay. I don't know that many people who are willing to do it, but uh, my wife, you know, if I call my wife, we'll, we'll use it. I think, you know, one of the things like with Skype and those type of things now is the fact that there's so many default things that we can use like FaceTime or whatever right. on our phones now that we just use that instead. I know we're running against the clock here. Yeah. A- after, after the break, everybody, we're going to con- we're going to continue this conversation and we're going to transform this conversation now into how you can actually create a true landline uh, using the internet. So come on back. Right now at 37. On Twitter, Facebook, online, and YouTube. Supertalk1270.com. Follow the guru of geek everywhere he goes. Post your comments or questions at thetechranch.com. Once again, your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And Miss Metaverse is joining us from Long Island. We're talking a little bit about how you can make and receive free hey, phone calls. Hey, Katie, how's the weather? We understand you guys are bracing for another storm. Oh, are we? <laughs> 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 yeah, I hope not. <laughs> well, you guys just had one, right? Yeah, we did. We just, yeah. we just had like two feet, I think, uh, two or three days ago. Ugh. Yeah. You had what we had back over Christmas and yeah. New Year's, it sounds like. Uh, right, yep. Yeah. The weather's been really wonky over here. It's just been kind of warm one second, and then it's freezing the next. And right. everybody's been sick. Yeah, the other day they, they hit the 60s. Uh, near Philadelphia, near my hometown, and then the next day they had snow coming right, down. Right, weird. Yeah, well, it's like yeah, here sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Kind of how it goes. Sounds so. like north. Um, sounds like uh, Midwest weather. It does, yeah. where you have those high fluctuations all the you time. Know, if you so. don't like it, wait five minutes. That's exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. So anyway, we're talking about how um, you can change your um, Wi-Fi or your internet, I guess, into making free phone calls. So, are are you familiar with the UMA? No. Okay. So I have a couple of these devices now. I have one for home. I have one for work. Uh, The work one, uh, basically, it's a device. It's about the size of half a sheet of paper, somewhere in that neighborhood, okay? And you plug it into your Wi-Fi. You can port your phone numbers over to it. So if you have, you know, a couple for business or whatever, you can port them over for home. You can port your landline over to this, which is what we did about a year and a half ago. And then, uh, so I'll pick on the home one first, and then when you port it over, once once that takes place, which, you know, back then was a couple of weeks, I think now it's like under a week. And sometimes I think some people get it ported almost immediately. The technology has really, really ramped up there a little bit. And when you have that happen, from that point forward, your phone calls are free. You, you have this little box, mm. and then you plug your regular phone into it. So if you have a cordless handset that you run around the house with, if you've got a corded phone that you want to plug into it, whatever you want to plug into this, think of it like a telephone jack that you have in your wall, except that now it's on this little box instead, and you plug into that, and now you have a landline. And if you want to um, have 911 service, you have to pay the taxes. So... I think right now we pay about $30 a year for taxes on our UMA phone at home, and that's it. And then we have 911 service. We have 
free phone calls across the country. Um, and there's no monthly phone bill. We just pay that yearly tax on it. Um, and that's it. It's, it's fantastic. And I think you can opt out of the tax if you don't want it. But I think for most people, it's important to have that 911 service. So you have to pay the tax on that if you want it. So mm. that's kind of how it works. Uh, it costs about $100 to get this device. But after that, your phone is free. Awesome. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. And you don't have, you know, you don't have to have the person that has the UMA on the other side to, to make it work. The phone quality is amazing. In fact, I would say that if there, well, there is HD audio. If, if there was HD audio for phones, UMA has it. It's really? amazing how good the yeah. quality is. Yeah. That's always been an issue, of course, with these these phone services. I agree. They've always been issues. Like, and, remember when Magic Jack first came out? The Magic oh, Jack? my goodness. And it was terrible. It uh, was, initially, it was ter- it's gotten better now, I It understand. has. Yeah. But you're right. It was absolutely terrible. And, and Jim, you had mentioned something about telemarketers. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to have a landline, you're going to have to deal with telemarketers. Well, or am I wrong about that? Well, that would be, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people get rid of the landline. That's why we get rid of ours. Because you just get all, that's one all, reason, yeah. all you get on there now is telemarketers. Yeah. Katie, do you still have a landline? I do not, actually. It's funny you say that because I was thinking about whether I even should bother getting one again. Okay. Since I moved, and no, right. I don't think so. And I think I might that's, get what you have, though. Well, like I said, we have the UMA, and, and th- this was the issue. You know, Alice and I, we've had the same phone number for years. And you just get tired of paying this 35 or 40 bucks a month or whatever it is for yeah. this phone that you get telemarketer calls on. Right. You know, very seldom do you get regular calls on it anymore. But you like to have that assurance that if you need to pick up a phone or maybe you have a, a relative that hasn't called you in 10 years this is the phone number they still if have. If there's some right? kind of emergency uh, yeah. where for some reason the power grid is knocked out, right. then it could be useful, certainly. Well, and, and mm-hmm. you know, well, the power grid with the internet line is a little bit different because you need to have right. power for that. You know, So yeah. uh, it's a little bit different than a regular landline in that respect. That's mm-hmm. probably the one instance where a landline, a true landline, yeah. is better than anything else is because when the power grid goes down, your regular phone will generally still work. Yeah. Because the power that it needs to consume comes through the phone line. Yeah. Then said so. But getting back to the telemarketers. So, right. So Uma has a blacklist. So if you get a, if you get a telemarketing phone call, yeah. they actually have a hot button on their on their device. Right. You can go over there and you can push that hot button, and that tells Uma that this was a telemarketing phone call. Yeah. If they get a couple of these, they actually blacklist the number and nobody else in UMA will get that phone call anymore. I like that. <laughs> so our our instance of scams, telemarketers, whatever, since we've had UMA has gone down significantly. And mm. I, when I say significantly, I mean, we, we used to get pounded all the time with telemarketing yeah. calls. Like in the old days. In yeah. the old days. And when we switched to UMA, we occasionally get the, the PC scam one, which we enjoy because we give them a bad time anyway. Yeah. We just leave, lead them on for an hour I'll tell or two. You, on yeah, the phone. Where, where what, the ransom thing? Well, the ransom they thing, ransom or they want to get into the computer so that they can, uh, you know, oh, it's, we're, we're Microsoft Windows, and we, we see that there's something wrong with your computer over <laughs> right. here. Oh, sure you do. Can you give us your uh, all of your uh, access uh, information? Then? That's exactly give right. Give us your password. So, uh, no, we uh, really need it. We're but, really. But that's <laughs> really, we do. The, uh, but that's the thing I love about Uma, is that for that hundred bucks you can uh, for that device. So the the business one now, um, we pay I think it's forty five dollars a month. We have yeah. we have two lines that come in at any given time. Three lines, excuse me. We have three lines that came in on that, and then everybody. Is, so if all three lines were busy, you just put into a caller queue. And you just sit and listen to the the music or whatever we have, you know, pl- pipe into you until one of the phone lines become available again, and and voila, for forty five bucks a month, unlimited phone calls across the country in Canada for free. So our like phone it. bill is always the same, even even on the business side, it's yeah. dramatically less. And again, that's the, great. The quality is amazing because we have a regular line or landline in our office as well for the for another business that we have in there. Mm. We have three lines that come into that, and that's three hundred bucks a month. That's our average mm. with, with everything yeah. that we have on there. And we don't make that many that many long distance calls on. Right, there. it just drives me nuts that mm. we pay. Forty-five over here for this, and we pay three hundred for this over here. So we're we're going to be switching everything over to to Uma in the future. 
So, how do you spell that? Uma? Ooh, or ooh, ooh. <laughs> Is it like Thurman, Ms. Thurman, the actress? Yeah. O O M A. Oh, Uma. Uma. O O M A. Uma, like that, Uma Thurman. Right. It's Uma. Uma. O O M A. So you want to? Uma. You want to check that out? That's for sure. So there is well, there is one other option if you really want, and I know we're pushing up against the clock, and I'm we're trying fine. to get through this yeah. fast. So, um, is it's called the the Obi Obiha O B A A H A A. I think I pronounced that Obiha. <laughs> And it's a device. Yeah, stop laughing at me, Katie. Um, and I, I have these, and it's fantastic. And how it works is it, it syncs to – it's about the size of your cell phone. Okay. It's a little device. You plug it straight into your, into your router at home, and then you plug a regular phone line into it or a regular phone into it again too, just like you would with the UMA or if you had a landline. But what this thing does is it syncs to Google Voice, and mm. it takes about – Five to ten minutes to set up. It's actually mm-hmm. very easy to set up once you get it in. And it's I have the Obiha 200 series. Cost me sixty bucks for this, and after that, your phone calls are free, totally free. Ooh. No taxes, no nothing. That is very non sucky. Yes, yes, I absolutely love it. And and uh, so at work we have our fax machine. You know, we wanted to have a dedicated phone number for our fax machine. So I, what I have done is I've used the Obiha. With Google Voice, and now we have a dedicated fax in our office that runs totally free. I just absolutely love that technology. So, what do you think, Katie? I think that's a win. That's very cool. <laughs> okay. I have to check that out. You know, and I think the names are, are ridiculous, though. I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> I won't. I won't call. I won't argue with that. Why don't they call something like free phone device, yeah. right? Where you could, you know, because. <laughs> They had that everywhere. Would know, hey, this is a device I can make was free it phone the calls. Obi Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, what, what, what was the other one? The I think one? it's called the Obi Ha. Obi Ha. I'll, I'll post that out a little bit later. I'm not sure I why come up with a the little name. mnemonic device in my head. Imagine Obi. Uh, I don't know, getting tickled or something. There you goes, go. Ha. Ah, okay. <laughs> Obi Ha. All right. So yeah, I'm not sure what the name on it, but they they certainly could do a better job with the marketing of that because I think they would sell <laughs> dramatically more. Oh of these. yeah. Uh, but it's very easy, and and Google Voice, by the way, is free. If you yeah. have a Gmail account, you have any Gmail account, Jim? I do, but I haven't used it in millennia. It doesn't matter. If you can sign mm-hmm. into it, you get yourself a Google Voice account. I can always open a new one, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah it's it's free, totally free. And, of course, it, it syncs into Google Hangouts as well. Yeah. So so if I get a call on, on, the, on the Google Voice thing, my Google Hangouts rings. So if I'm on my computer or yeah. on my phone, I still get the phone call that way as well. So right. it's pretty cool. It really is. Excellent. So, Kitty, I have something before we go. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is really awesome. If you have a Chrome or a Firefox browser, this website's called Pop Talks. It's P O P T O X, and it's really, really, really helpful um, for those circumstances when you don't have your phone on you and you can't find it in the house but you know the ringer's on and you just wish you had another phone to call and you don't have a landline right. like me. That's happened to me so many times because I, I lose things. I'm terrible like that. So I could lose my phone in the house somewhere. It's probably behind the couch or something. And uh, I, I go crazy trying to find it and I, I get really mad. I'm looking everywhere and I'm like getting frustrated. And next thing you know, I'm like, all right, you know, I should just have a freaking landline. Why don't I have that? Mm. Um, but I really don't use it. So it's why, why should I? But now... Of course, I'll have an alternative. But if you don't, you should use, you use this website. All you do is you go on poptalks.com, and you have uh, right there, without any annoying ads or anything, there's a phone, and you just dial right on the phone yeah. on the browser, and it'll call for you. And okay. it's, it's nothing else. poptalks.com. We got we to gotta go, Katie. Thanks for being on the show, Jim. Pleasure as always. Likewise.